1.4 probably. This project will show you how to build a mini hydroelectric power station using a stream, turning natural water flow into usable electricity. Here, we'll explore how to assemble a compact yet powerful turbine system from scratch. The components are simple but effective. With a modified scooter motor, 3D printed blades, and carefully selected injectors for different water conditions. The best part? We're doing all of this in a real-world setting, conducting tests in Thailand's tropical climate. By the end, you'll see how a small DIY turbine can generate enough power for practical uses like charging electric bikes. Preparing the components. The first step in assembling our mini hydroelectric power station is gathering all the essential components, starting with the core element, the turbine. The turbine is powered by a modified Euro scooter motor, which is an unconventional choice, but it works exceptionally well for this application. This motor is designed to output three-phase alternating current, AC, which will later be converted into usable energy. The motor is robust, and its ability to generate mechanical energy from water flow is crucial for the system's success. Next, we have the injectors. The kit includes six different injectors, each with varying diameters. The size of the injector you choose depends on the stream's water flow rate and the pressure you need to generate electricity. By selecting the appropriate injector, you can optimize the system's energy output. The injectors are attached to the system and control how much water is directed towards the turbine blades, ultimately influencing the overall performance. Speaking of turbine blades, these are 3D printed components that are designed to catch the water's flow and turn the motor. The blades need to be attached to the motor carefully, ensuring they spin freely and efficiently. The quality of the 3D printed plastic is vital here as it must withstand the pressure and constant motion of the water. Lastly, the frame serves as the structural base for these components, providing stability and ensuring the motor, blades, and injectors stay securely in place during operation. With all the parts prepared, we're ready to begin the assembly. Assembling the turbine. Now that we have all the necessary components, it's time to begin assembling the turbine. First, we'll attach the motor to the frame. This step is crucial as the motor will act as the heart of the turbine, converting mechanical energy from the water into electrical energy. Securely screwing the motor into place ensures stability and prevents any wobbling during operation. It's important to make sure it is positioned correctly for optimal performance. Next, we will install the turbine blades. These blades need to be screwed onto the motor. However, it's important not to tighten them completely right away. Leaving them slightly loose ensures that they can spin freely, but also provides the flexibility needed for minor adjustments later. The blades are designed to catch the water flow, turning the motor and creating the mechanical energy required to generate electricity. Once the motor and blades are securely in place, we move on to the final touches. At this point, we'll make sure that all connections are properly aligned, ensuring that the water flow is efficiently channeled towards the blades. With everything tightly secured, the turbine assembly is now ready to be tested in the stream to generate power. Setting up the water intake system. With the turbine assembled, the next critical step is setting up the water intake system. The efficiency of the hydroelectric power station depends largely on how well the water is channeled into the turbine. We begin by selecting an appropriate location along the stream where the water flow is strong and consistent. The greater the height difference between the water intake and the turbine, the more pressure and energy we can generate. So finding a good spot with a height difference of 10 to 20 meters is key. To connect the water to the turbine, we use a high-pressure hose. The first meter of the pipe must be rigid to prevent it from collapsing under the pressure, while the remaining length can be flexible. 
A simple filter made from a plastic bottle with small holes ensures that no debris or air enters the system, preventing potential clogs in the turbine. Once the intake pipe is securely in place, we connect it to the injector. The injector regulates the water flow into the turbine. After everything is set, we can begin testing the system by turning on the water and observing how well it channels into the turbine. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Testing and adjusting the system. With the water intake and turbine setup complete, it's time to test the system. The first step is to turn on the water and observe how it flows through the intake pipe and into the turbine. At this stage, we carefully check for any leaks or areas where the pipe might be pinched or blocked. It's crucial to ensure a smooth and uninterrupted water flow to maximize the turbine's efficiency. Next, we begin testing the various injectors. We start with the smallest one and observe the voltage generated by the turbine. If the voltage is too low, we can try a larger injector to increase the water flow and pressure, ultimately boosting the power output. Throughout the testing process, we adjust the nozzle size based on the flow and the electrical output. We also monitor the system for any potential issues, such as leaks, pressure drops, or problems with the turbine blades. If the system is not producing enough power, we may need to adjust the height of the intake or switch to a different injector. With some trial and error, we fine-tune the setup until the mini hydroelectric power station is producing stable and reliable energy. Wiring and electrical setup. Now that the turbine is generating power, it's time to focus on the electrical setup. The turbine produces three-phase alternating current, AC, which we need to convert into direct current, DC, for practical use. To achieve this, we install a diode bridge rectifier. The diode bridge helps convert the AC from the turbine into a smooth DC output, which is suitable for charging batteries or powering devices. Once the rectifier is in place, we connect the output to a battery bank for storage. The stored energy can later be used to power electric bikes, lights, or other devices. It's important to ensure that the battery is capable of handling the amount of power generated by the turbine. To prevent overcharging or damage, we use a charge controller that regulates the power going into the battery. Next, we connect an inverter to the battery bank. The inverter converts the stored DC power back into AC, allowing us to power household appliances or other devices that run on AC electricity. With the electrical system set up and all components properly connected, our mini hydroelectric power station is now ready to deliver clean, renewable energy. Final adjustments and performance testing. After setting up the electrical system, it's time for final adjustments and performance testing to ensure everything is functioning as expected. First, we inspect all connections carefully, especially the ones between the turbine, rectifier, battery bank, and inverter. Any loose connections can lead to power loss or system instability, so securing them properly is critical. Next, we connect various loads to the system, such as lights or small appliances, to test the energy output. Monitoring the voltage and current at this stage helps determine whether the turbine is generating enough power to meet the demand. If the output is low, we may need to adjust the water flow rate or change the nozzle size to enhance the pressure and energy production. Additionally, we check the water intake system for any blockages or air pockets that could reduce the efficiency of the turbine. It's essential to ensure that water is flowing smoothly into the system. After making any necessary adjustments, we run the system for several hours to observe its stability and performance. Once everything is fine-tuned, the mini hydroelectric power station is ready to deliver continuous, reliable energy. Maintenance and long-term operation. Once the mini hydroelectric power station is up and running, ongoing maintenance is essential for ensuring its longevity and optimal performance. 
The first step in maintenance is regularly inspecting the turbine and water intake system. Over time, debris such as leaves, twigs, or sediment can accumulate in the intake pipe, which could slow down the water flow. Cleaning the filter and the intake area frequently prevents clogging and ensures the turbine operates smoothly. Turbine blades are another critical component to watch. Since they are 3D printed, they may be prone to wear or breakage under constant water pressure. Periodically checking for signs of damage or wear and replacing or reinforcing the blades when necessary will keep the system running efficiently. The electrical components, including the diode bridge, charge controller, and battery, also require regular checks, ensuring that all electrical connections are secure and that the battery is neither overcharged nor drained too deeply is crucial for maintaining the system's health. Additionally, it's important to monitor the hose and connections during extreme weather conditions, as high pressure or heavy rain can cause leaks or pressure loss. With these regular maintenance steps, your mini hydroelectric power station can provide reliable power for years to come. And there you have it your very own mini hydroelectric power station built from scratch. This project demonstrates how a small stream can generate reliable, renewable energy, powering everything from electric bikes to household devices. By following these steps, you can harness the natural power of water to create sustainable energy solutions, even in remote areas with no access to the grid. With regular maintenance, this system can provide you with years of clean electricity. I hope this guide inspires you to explore the potential of renewable energy and build your own hydroelectric power station. Thanks for watching.